Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After losing his son during an accident, a brilliant scientist decides to create a robot version of the boy, who must now deal with the challenges of being a human made of metal. Today we will recap the story of the movie, Astro Boy, from 2009. Metro City is a fantastic floating city that was lifted from the ground about a century ago due to changes that occurred on the Earth's surface. Today, the inhabitants are not sure what the world is like down there. The city is technological and full of robots, which shop, cook, serve meals, babysit, and perform all the tasks that humans don't want or don't like to do. Their functions are divided into a hierarchy, in which the best robots get higher positions. Behind all this technology is Dr. Tenma, head of the Ministry of Science and the father of modern robotics, responsible for creating thousands of robots every day and then disposing of them as waste on the surface. Dr. Tenma has a son, Toby, who is known in school for his intelligence and vast knowledge. Because of this, he is not well liked by his colleagues. After class, when he gets to his car, Toby is greeted by a robot and a hologram of his father appears to postpone an appointment he had arranged with him because he will be busy making the Peacemaker presentation. Upon hearing this, the boy gets excited and asks the driver to change course to the Ministry of Science. Orin refuses to disobey his boss, but the boy, very clever, changes the robot settings to get what he wants. Toby arrives at the Ministry by surprise and his father scolds him, but President Stone tells him to let him stay. However, he changes his mind soon after when he realizes that the boy is very smart and can point out the mistakes in the new technologies and projects developed in the city. Professor Elephant then presents his new discovery, the Blue Core, a new source of self-sustaining energy from the fragment of a star that no longer exists. The discovery could change everything for those living in Metro City and even for those on the Earth's surface through reforestation and pollution removal. Yet all this miracle comes at a cost, the fragment releases a negative red energy that is unstable when combined with blue core energy. Before the scientist can finish his explanation, guards appear and prevent him from revealing the consequences of combining the two types of energy. It was the president who gave the orders to stop him, because he has his eye on the new possibilities he will have with the discovery in order to get re-elected. Meanwhile, Toby distracts the guard who is watching him and steals his card to escape. A super robot called the Peacemaker is activated by Dr. Tenma after scientists put the blue core inside it, but Stone goes against all warnings and decides to replace the blue energy with the red core to trigger the tin giant. Just then, the scientist's new creation begins to attack, but the mini-robots try to stop it. The monster is so clever that he begins to implant some of the little ones in his armor to use as a weapon. However, the shot begins to backfire when the Peacemaker advances through the protective glass. At the same time, Dr. Tenma realizes that Toby is trapped with the big guy, who releases a burst of light that causes the boy to disappear. The robot guards start shooting at the enemy in order to contain him and the scientists enter the chamber, but Toby is nowhere to be found. The only thing that is there is the boy's cap, which was left behind, and his father feels very guilty about what happened. So Dr. Tenma, filled with a feeling of regret and hope, uses Toby's hat to extract his DNA and transfer all his memories and characteristics into the body of a robot. After a few days, the man already begins to show signs of madness, which causes him to not sleep, to stop eating, and to just stay in the laboratory perfecting his new creation. Dr. Elephant lends one of the cores to Tenma, which connects him to the robot Toby, who is connected to cables that lift his body. At that instant, a great explosion of energy occurs, knocking him to the floor with such force that even the table breaks. Everything seems to be lost, but Toby finally gets up and embraces his father. Dr. Tenma waits for his son to wake up at his bedside, but the boy feels strange. However, the scientist assures him that nothing wrong has happened, hiding the fact that in reality he is no longer human. Orin notices the change in the boy, but his boss prevents him from telling what is happening. Toby is then informed that he will no longer go to school and will stay at home with his father, who intends to abandon his career at the Ministry of Science. Dr. Tenma teaches formulas to his son, who after solving the exercises with excellence, gets distracted by making a little animation with the calculations on the computer screen. Disappointed, his father decides to bring books for the child to study. In one of these books, Toby sees one of Leonardo da Vinci's works on flight. At that moment, he decides to go look for Orin and asks for his help in making several miniatures of airplanes and flying objects. His father suddenly arrives and scolds the boy after seeing the mess he has made on the premises. Soon after, the man is saddened to see Orin wearing his son's cap. Toby tries to console him by saying that he doesn't mind the robot wearing the object, but it is all in vain as the doctor remembered his dead son upon seeing the hat. Tenma calls Professor Elephon, feeling frustrated by the mistake he has made. He does not feel that the robot boy is his son, and at the same time Toby wonders why his father is trying to avoid him. 
some robots that are cleaning the window make fun of the boy for looking like a human. Toby then gets angry and opens the window to grab the cleaning robot, which moves away putting the boy on the edge of the cliff. He then loses his balance and falls from the building at high speed, but does not reach the ground. Unexpectedly, rockets appear at his feet and Toby discovers that he can fly. While having fun, he ends up throwing himself at everything and everyone, because he still has no control over his new power. During the ride, he is caught on camera, rides a train, and flies above the clouds. After that, Toby ventures into the sky and inside the earth of the floating city. Stone complains about the casualties in his constituents when his employees detect an unidentified flying object, and again the man sees an opportunity to gain even more power. Meanwhile, Tenma tells Professor Elephant how unbearable it is to look at his son, but Toby arrives just in time. When the truth is revealed to the boy, the doctor claims that he is not his father and Elephant tries to console him, but the boy leaves. Toby is surprised by the president's guards, who start chasing him. They throw a green goo to capture him, and the boy manages to dodge one of the robots, but bumps into another security guard and ends up being arrested. Toby, however, is determined to escape and pushes against the claws until he breaks free. One of his pursuers begins to fall off the building, but Toby decides to save him. Despite this, Stone does not give up on capturing the boy and uses his ship to go after him. He starts shooting and it seems impossible that the young man can escape. However, Toby begins to fall beyond the city limits and the mayor declares a state of emergency in order to capture him. When the young man wakes up, he realizes that he is not in Metro City, but on the surface of the Earth. At this time, several damaged robots begin to approach and talk to him. A robot dog, which looks more like a garbage can, asks Toby to help him find a person, but in fact it is a trap. The dog then pushes the poor boy away, revealing several human children who were lurking around waiting to surround him. The youngsters find it amazing that Toby came from Metro City. They love the robots, but they would never be able to enter the city because of the revulsion some humans there have against the people on the surface. Toby tells his sad story and the children introduce themselves, but before he can say his name some robots appear and take him into a room. The trio celebrates Toby's freedom and thinks about finding a new name for him. After a few minutes, they decide to call him Astro, as they believe this name sounds appropriate for a robot. Even though they have vowed not to hurt the humans, the robots feel controlled and want to put an end to this by capturing the surface mechanic named Hamig, who is responsible for restoring several tin men on the scene. Minutes later, the children manage to find Toby, who asks the trio of robots not to reveal his true identity. From then on, in order to avoid being discovered, he introduces himself as Astro. The president goes to see Dr. Tenma about the blue core being used to create Toby's robot, but the doctor is very saddened by his mistake, so he accepts the proposal to retrieve the boy and deactivate him, giving the blue core to Stone to use in Peacemaker. Meanwhile, Astro walks across the surface with the children to his hideout. Hamig is the only adult in the place, and the kids bring him various junk parts to fix or incorporate into other robots. The man also came from Metro City and now owns a workshop on Earth. The situation in that place is precarious. Everyone eats leftover pizza from two days ago, but even under those circumstances, the children feel happy. In the past, Hamig worked at the Ministry of Science alongside Dr. Tenma, but was dismissed as trash for having genius ideas. The children are after parts for the mechanic to make robots and enter them in a championship that has become a tradition among them. The robot dog now tries to draw on the earth and warns Zane that Astro is not made of flesh and blood, but the boy doesn't even understand what the animal means. Astro gets excited when he finds a huge old robot, but the children come to the conclusion that he is too old and will never work. Even so, the boy analyzes his system and, incredibly, manages to connect the century-old robot with the energy of the blue core. Hamig is trying to teach a robot to fight and is surprised by the children's tin monster, which squashes the little guy like a bug. At that instant, everyone is shocked to see that Astro has managed to fix the giant. Hamig uses a detection machine and realizes that the robot has absurd energy, which is also emitted by Astro, but nobody pays much attention to this detail. They give the giant a bath and, after painting him, decide to call him Zog. After all the mess, Korra almost falls, but Astro manages to save her by using his flight system without her realizing it. While playing with the tin dog, Astro is surprised to see the young woman trying to call Metro City, but without any success. So he takes the phone from her hand and uses his power to activate it. In fact, Korra is trying to talk to her parents who are on the floating city, from where she escaped. The girl trusts Astro to keep her secret. In the face of this, the robot boy will finally reveal himself, but ends up saying that he feels strange, as if he were a foreigner, so he decides not to open up. The revolutionary front robots are on the prowl, 
hiding in boxes, in order to carry out their revolutionary plan during a performance by Hamig and Zog around the city. Astro discovers that the championship held by the mechanic is a robot fight, in which Zog will have to duel them all and destroy them. They are forced to fight to the very end, since they are imprisoned and cannot rebel against humans. One of the robots participating in the championship is preparing for the fight when suddenly Zog appears and he loses all hope. Hamig sees no problem in making the robots fight to destruction, since the ones on the surface are just trash, unlike the robots in Metro City that are programmed to be just like humans. After saying this, he shoots Astro, causing him to fall to the ground. Hamig reveals to the children that the boy is actually a robot and intends to put him in the championship fight. The children do not support this decision, but are hurt that Astro did not tell them his secret. In the fighting arena, the mechanic tells several lies about the boy to encourage the audience to cheer against him. Then a robot enters the arena and the duel begins. Astro tries to escape, but there is a containment barrier to prevent the fighters from leaving. He is then forced to fight and destroys his enemy by pushing him against the containment barrier, this time, his opponent appears to be a weak and harmless robot, however, the creature grows and starts shooting at Astro, who uses parts of his own opponent to attack him, winning yet another duel. Hamig becomes angry and puts several robots to fight Astro at once. The boy is frightened, but his friends from the Robot Revolutionary Front show up to help him. After the chaos in the arena, the boy again emerges victorious, but is saddened by the children's hurt look. Hamig decides to appeal to Zog by having him fight Astro, but Astro doesn't want to face his friend. So the giant reaches out to grab the boy, but instead of fighting, he caresses his head. In an attempt to force them to fight, Hamig gives them a few shocks, but Zog makes a move and goes on top of the man with the goal of crushing him. However, just as he is about to trample his enemy, he is stopped by Astro. Just when things seem to be getting better, Stone's ship appears in the sky and several robot guards descend to capture the boy. At the same time, people begin to boo and throw cans at Hamig. Finally, Astro turns himself in, since there is no other way to resolve the whole situation. The president wants to retrieve the Blue Corps to put it into the Peacekeeper Soldier and start a war against the Earth's surface. He then hands Astro over to the scientists to remove the energy source from its interior and deactivate it. Before being turned off, Astro tells Elephant that he has tried to find his place in the world, but believes his destiny is only to serve as a source of funds for the researchers. Dr. Tenma doesn't even try to stop Stone, as he believes that his son is no longer alive. He removes the blue core from inside Astro, although he feels very sad doing so. Afterwards, the boy confesses that he has not been a good son to him. The doctor hands the stone to the president, but at the last minute changes his mind and takes the power source from his hands. Elephant feels responsible for the creation of the core and decides to steal it. He is about to hand it over to Stone, but in fact he had already stealthily handed the object over to Dr. Tenma, who intends to use it to reactivate Astro. At that moment, the president threatens Elephant with a gun and forces him to hand over his access card. Dr. Tenma finally opens his eyes and sees that Toby is gone, but that Astro has all his memories, so he is also his son. At this point, the two embrace, and Astro flies away. Stone gives the two scientists the go-ahead and now intends to use the red core to power the peacekeeper. He doesn't care one bit about the fact that the energy could cause irreparable damage. When the monster is activated, it is ordered to destroy Astro, but before that it attacks the president himself and begins to absorb all the technology around it. Meanwhile, Astro runs into the two robot cleaners lost in the sky, who notice a lot of explosions in Metro City and decide to go check what is going on. Once there, Astro finds chaos in the city and his enemy is bigger than before. The creature soon begins shooting at the boy, who activates his cannon arms and fires back. On the surface, the kids look at Metro City and miss Astro even after they discover that he was keeping a big secret. Meanwhile, Hamig is about to take the car and drive away leaving the kids alone, but they stop him with Zog's help. Astro fights the Peacemaker, who believes he owns the city. The monster then knocks down one of the buildings on top of himself, but fights with all his might to take out his opponent, who uses the machine guns coming out of his back to defend himself. The metal giant pulls one of the buildings out of the ground and uses it like a baseball bat to hurl Astro far away. Later, he tries to crush the boy who is lying on the ground, but the children appear with the flying car and manage to save him, while the robot dog drives the car terribly. Before they leave, the floating city begins to fall and Astro flies in to try to hold it up by the base, pushing it upwards with the help of the rockets attached to his feet. Despite this, Metro City keeps falling further and further until it lands on the surface of the kids run to look for Astro who is lying on the ground, however, the Peacemaker is still intact. He is threatened by the robot revolutionary front team, but of course they are no match for the big guy. 
finally the robot boy shows up and tries to smash a rod into his enemy's head, but it doesn't even tickle the monster. He continues to fight the giant, who manages to capture him and place him next to his red core with negative energy, which causes an explosion that throws Astro away. Dr. Tenma warns that the cores cannot come together or both carriers will die. Astro leaves with his father, but his friends are captured by the Peacekeeper and he believes he must save them. To rescue them and destroy his enemy, Astro heads straight for the Red Core and thus sacrifices himself while his memories and happy times flash through his mind. At that instant, the joining of the two powers leads to a giant explosion that causes the monster to lose every part of its body. Soon after, President Stone emerges from the wreckage. He is then stopped and arrested by the city's robot guards. The children, Elephant and Zog find Astro lifeless in a place not far from there. When all seems lost, the Tin Giant donates some of the energy from his blue core to the boy, allowing him to awaken again. Everyone considers Astro a hero and the boy realizes that he has finally found his place in the world. Then Korra finds her parents, who never gave up looking for her, and Astro says goodbye to his friends from the robot revolutionary front. The town does not have a peaceful day, as a giant monster that has countless tentacles in a single eye appears. Luckily, Astro is nearby and prepares to be the hero, once again. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.